Uh, okay. So I just want to thank everybody for uh, having me here. Um, I'm Eric Morell. I'm a criminal defense attorney in New Brunswick, and um, I appreciate you know, the Simi Alpha Mu uh, brothers um, of Rutgers having me here today to speak. So um, every year I speak in front of the Greek area. Um, sometimes I speak in front of the whole Greek area. Sometimes I speak in front of individual fraternities. Today I'm speaking in front of the individual fraternities. Um, I want to just give you some information in regard to risk management. I know everybody in this, in this fraternity is involved in the house and we have a, a young pledge class here, and I want the, the future leaders of this fraternity to know things that you have to be aware of. And um, Rutgers, um, I could just talk a little bit about Rutgers RFC policy. Just so you know, Greek life is highly valued at Rutgers. Um, they're, they're here to promote and an environment that encourages social interaction with the campus. Um, and I wanted to just go over the uh, Enforcement of the Office of Fraternity and Sorority Affairs. I don't know if you're familiar with this. This is the social policy. Everybody should, of course, have a copy of this when um, you've joined the fraternity. And it talks about some of the different definitions of things that are in the, um, the general policy statements. Um, alcohol use must comply with all state and university rules, laws, and regulations. No alcohol should be present in any program, activity, or ritual of the chapter. Keep in mind, if there's any alcohol involved with the pledge program, this could be considered hazing, which has already caused a tragedy um, in the Greek community. I don't know if you guys know about this, but a few years ago, there was a tragedy at uh, Ryder University. Um, a young man, his name was uh, Gary Dermaselli, was pledging a fraternity. Um, the, the fraternity was Phi Kappa Tau. He was 18 years old, and there was a big brother, um, little brother night, and unfortunately, um, he drank too much alcohol and it was, it was very dangerous, and he, he died. Um, the fraternity was actually, um, some of the members of the fraternity that were there, uh, some of the, the president, the vice president, they were all brought up on criminal charges, and actually the dean of students was brought up on charges, and the dean of Greek affairs was brought up on charges. It was pretty serious, it was in a lot of um, local papers, and the big thing about the case was First of all, his blood alcohol was uh, 0.426 um, in the state of New Jersey. 0.08 is the uh, you know, legal limit for uh, DWI. So if you could think about how much alcohol that was, and the big thing on a case like this, which is really something that you should you should uh, understand, is that the the criminal charges that were actually filed um, were pretty serious. Um, if you look at 2C40-3 which is the hazing statute in um, New Jersey, it's the Attorney General um, hazing statute. It says a person is guilty of hazing, a disorderly person's offense, if in connection with the initiation of applicants to or members of a, of a student or fraternal organization, he knowingly, recklessly organizes, promotes, facilitates, or engages in any conduct other than competitive athletic events, which place or may place another person in danger of bodily injury. It's up to a thousand dollar fine, it can be zero to six months in jail. Now, there's an aggravated hazing part of the statute, which is a fourth degree crime, and this would be a case probably that would be heard in superior court. If you have no criminal record and you get charged with this, you would probably not go to jail. But if you had any prior criminal history, it would be zero to 18 months in jail, and um, it could be up to a $10,000 fine. And in the Ryder situation, a lot of these brothers were charged with these, these charges. It's pretty serious. Um, so I just want you guys to really understand this a little bit. And there's a form when you, when you pledge the fraternity, you signed the Rutgers University Hazing Compliance Policy Form. And everybody, everybody signed it. And it discusses hazing is defined as an act that is an explicit or implicit condition for initiation or admission into affiliation with or continued membership in a group or organization. Hazing is a broad term encompassing any action or activity which does not contribute to the positive development of a person. It goes into which inflicts um, physical or mental harm or anxieties or demeans, degrades, or de disgraces any person regardless of location. And all of you, of course, have signed this, um, this agreement. Um, now, some other things that you have to be aware of. Um, not using chapter funds to purchase bulk alcohol to serve you got to remember that. Don't use chapter funds. It's very important. Um, these are all, all other, other information from the, um, from the RFSA. The chapters are permitted a total of eight social events per semester with alcohol. These are alumni functions, 
brother and sister functions, date functions, and mixers. At chapters are allowed to have initiation parties, no more than three guests per collegiate member, only if the event is at a licensed third party vendor. It may, na may not take place in a chapter house. Open parties are strictly prohibited. Um, and whenever you have a party, you're supposed to have guest lists. Guest lists must be submitted for every registered event by noon the day prior to the event. Each guest list is supposed to have a first and last name with an address. Um, also, the, this is the entrance policy for alcohol. The number of guests permitted must be in accordance with fire code. There's supposed to be only three guests per student. The admission is limited to members and invited guests only. No temporary guest passes, no fraternity passes. All persons in attendance must provide a proper ID for admittance. Um, without a proper ID, you're not supposed to be able to get in. You must provide bracelets to guests of legal drinking age. You must have at least two initiated members of the entrance to perform the above. And there must be no open containers that can enter or leave. No members are to provide alcohol to anyone of the legal drinking age. Possession of controlled substances are, for, um, are strictly forbidden while on chapter premises. No chapter is allowed to co-sponsor an event with an alcohol distributor. No advertising can have alcohol use involved. No chapter may co-sponsor a function where alcohol is purchased by another host organization. Or rushing must be dry. No member shall permit, promote, or participate in drinking games, beer pong, ice block shots, jello shots. All alcohol events must be registered. Registration forms are supposed to be filled out completely. Late forms will result in non-approval. Advisors must sign each registration form. That would be me. Chapters are responsible for providing adequate quantity of non-alcoholic beverages for the duration of any social event. Chapters are encouraged to host at least eight non-alcoholic events each semester. Um, all of these uh, rules are, you know, strict because you want to be safe and you want to make sure that you're protecting the people that are involved. Um, I'm not going to go into this uh, Kelly v. Gwinnell and this uh, social host liability part of the, um, okay. So over the years I've developed a, um, a strategy and my strategy is that I'm actually creating an alcohol awareness task force and those are the forms that I put in front of you. Um, I ask that you go over it and I'm going to go over some of the, some of the um, information in it, but I ask at the end that you sign it. And I hope that you would appreciate this and, and get involved in this. So basically, fraternity-sponsored alcohol events are one of many threats to the survival of Greek life at any college or university. Studies show that students involved in fraternities and sororities consume and abuse alcohol on a much greater scale than other students at the schools, at the, I'm sorry, at the same schools. Now, each fraternity should take proactive steps to uphold its own and the university's alcohol and social policies. If it, this is done in an effort to reduce, if not eliminate, known risks involved in chapter functions. Um, the membership of the fraternity must understand and appreciate that use of alcohol in chapter events creates legal problems, adversely affects public safety, jeopardizes the health and welfare of the fraternity's brotherhood, and may make the chapter ineligible for liability insurance coverage. The law offices of Eric Morale, in conjunction with the executive board of each fraternity, Propose a risk management alcohol awareness initiative to combat the potential risks associated with violations of social policies. Um, so the risk management alcohol awareness initiative, basically um, we propose that we create an alcohol awareness task force comprised of the chapter president, the executive board members, and the new member educator. And then I have some of the different um, responsibilities of that task force. Also the chapter will provide Oh, I'm sorry, will properly abide by any and all alcohol policies of Interfraternity Council, Panhellenic, and OFSA. And the chapter is going to work to establish strong ties with OFSA. Um, the chapter will require each social chairman to attend training administered by OFSA, and the chapter will introduce the AATF to OFSA during said social training. So these are some of the um, ideas I came up with. Um, if you want to go, go through them a little bit, Basically what the um, Alcohol Awareness Task Force is, they're going to be responsible for maintaining all Interfraternity Council, RFC, and Office of Fraternity Affairs rules and regulations. And this um, initiative will also be responsible for educating the members periodically regarding alcohol related issues and the potential liabilities thereof. Um, the AATF is going to research and educate the membership on issues related to the compliance with the above mentioned rules. And the AATF will, at the Interfraternity Council request, educate the RFC board regarding the AATF's ongoing process and the effectiveness of the initiative. I've actually spoken in front of the uh, whole Greek area on this, on this issue. 
And through the chapter's participation in IFC affairs, the AATF will encourage each fraternity on campus to maintain a similar task force. So each fraternity should have their own task force that, I, that I'm suggesting in individually. So I ask at the end that you, um, that you sign it, um, and I'll sign it if, uh, you know, so you can um, have uh, evidence that, you know, we were here, and this was uh, my, uh, my law office's idea. Um, I just want to discuss a couple other things in regard to, um, I don't know if you know, but you are a member of a, um, your fraternity is a member of the uh, Fraternity Insurance Purchase Group, which is that James Favor Purchase Group. So what requirements are? Hazing, pledging shall be limited to eight weeks or less. No chapter student or alumni shall conduct nor condone hazing activities. Intensive final weeks or hell weeks are strictly prohibited. The fraternity, this is sexual abuse and harassment, the fraternity will not tolerate or condone any form of sexual abusive behavior on its part of its members, whether physical, mental, or emotional. This includes any action which are demeaning to women or men, including but not limited to date rape, gang rape, or verbal harassment. Strippers at chapter events are specifically prohibited. Chapters are expected to abide by all applicable laws. Fire, health, and safety. 